morning to praise you, worship you, glorify you, and thank you for all the blessings thou hast bestowed upon us. Lord Jesus, as we come to you this morning, I lift all your children up to you and pray that you will provide their needs and draw nigh to them. Lord, I pray that you will give us hearts that are open to hear your word and whatever we hear, may we use it to honor and glorify your name. For I ask these mercies in Jesus' holy name. Amen. 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 Uh, this morning, I have a few announcements. Uh, last year and the, and the year before that, we handed out uh, gift baskets. This year, because of our present situation, we decided to hand out gift cards. And what I'm asking is that our members who, uh, who are accustomed handing out baskets, I will ask that you will try to submit names of the rep, the, those who will be receiving those, those gifts. Uh, for the simple reason, I, you wouldn't want to do, be duplicating. Um, and again, I would like to have those names in hopefully before on or before the 15th of December to give people enough time to do their own shopping. Uh, I also would like um, people to realize and that those of us who are members that will be receiving cards is one thing, but there are people who we give cards or, or baskets to are not members. It would be nice if we could get their email address because we are living at a time when, yes, we had them out at Christmas, but at the same time, um, these, there are people that might need help later on in the year. Other than that, we could at least invite them to the Zoom program just to bring some comfort because the programs that Eileen has been you know, putting together for us has been very, very interesting, very touching, very moving. This, the one last night was really something that touched my heart. And right now people need not just physical help, but if we could help them to soothe their minds and their hearts at this time through our Vespers program, and other, programs, and the other programs that might be available, please get some information from them like their email address so that we could help them later on down the road. There will also be a church business meeting on December 12th at 7 p.m. on the Zoom platform. We are asking all members and those who may not be on today, if you know of anyone that is not on the program today, uh, please remind them that we'll be having a church business meeting on December 12th at 7 p.m. on Zoom. Um, also, I just want to... There was a slight mix-up this 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 uh, this week. Um, I was the one that is assigned for elder on duty, but I, myself and Eileen had a had a had a switch. But with the amount of work that she is doing, I decided just to continue, not realizing that um, Sandra, she had asked Sandra. Had, was asked to do it. What I will ask Sandra to do at this time: the people who you had lined up for platform party for this week. Uh, I would like to talk to you about that, so maybe we could have them on uh, next Sabbath, which will be a great help. Again, I want to welcome each and every one of you, and thank you for being with us this morning. From wherever you might be connecting from, I just want to thank you. Uh, we are living at a day and age where we need the support of each other, and I will strongly recommend, uh, And I'm, uh, when I look at the title of the sermon today, it really uh, is very important for us to spend more time in prayer because we are living in a, in a time when evil men and impostors are getting worse and worse. And we, we are living in perilous times. So making your prayer life, uh, a stronger prayer life is, is necessary at this particular time. Again, welcome. And may God bless each and every one of us as we, uh, as we listen to the sermon today. 
May God bless us all. God bless. Verses 31 and 32 says, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan had desire to have you, and he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee that thy fate fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. I'll now read from Job 42, verse 10. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. The word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. 
this morning as we go before the Lord in prayer, I want us to really consider what is happening around us. It's not going to change. Well, it will change, but I believe it will change for the worst. And there are certain things that has been said, certain things that is promoted, certain things that has been, uh, you know, you're getting information. And some people might believe it's, uh, it's, just, uh, it's just empty words, but it's not. Our prayer life and our study life, we need to increase that. We need to pray for each other as well. We need to spend time on our knees a little longer in our private devotion and pray for our families, pray for our friends, pray for, pray for the world. There's a lot of people that is going around as though it's business as usual, but it's not business as usual. This morning as we pray, as I am praying, call to mind some of your friends and some of your family members who are not with us. And you send up a prayer as well. Don't just listen to what I have to say. I'm praying to God. You send up some prayer as well for your family who is. Family members who are yet to recognize what is happening. So the message today could not be more fitting, even though I haven't heard it as yet. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you dear God who is all powerful, all knowing, all seeing. You dear Lord who eyes is on your people. One songwriter said, if your eyes is on the sparrow, Lord, we realize that your eyes are upon us as well. And we should not fear. Lord, we have sinned and all fall short of your glory, yet still, in your word it has said, what is man that you are mindful of him? Lord, you also promised that the work that you started in us, you promise, dear Lord, that you will finish that work. And what a great promise, what a great hope that you have given us. Yes, Lord, we stumble. Yes, Lord, we do things that is not in favor of your will. But Lord, we pray that through the power of your Holy Spirit, you will help us, guide us, and strengthen us in this time. Lord, we are living, your words have said that we are living in perilous times in the end. And Lord, we are seeing that daily. We realize, Lord, that there are people who consider others as undesirable. The people who are poor. The people who are destitute. The people who create problems, they see us as undesirable. But they also included religious people in that, in that, in that connection. It seems as though religion is a problem to these people. And Lord, I humbly beg in the name of your son Jesus as I bow before you at this time, Lord. I pray for each and every member that is in the presence of my hearing right now. Give us the strength, dear Lord, to stand at this time. Help us, Lord, to take on the complete armor that you have provided for us so that we will be able to stand at a time like this. Lord, we thank you for your mercy and your kindness and your love towards us. And dear Lord, we pray in the name of your son, Jesus, as we go from day to day, help us, Lord, never to forget your promises. Help us, Lord, to recognize that the blood that was shed for us will never, never lose its power. And help us, Lord, to trust you. I pray, God, for those who are sick today, Lord, I pray that you will stretch forth your hands of mercy towards them and help them to recognize that you are there with them. I pray for our children and our grandchildren, Lord, that, Lord, you will open their hearts and minds to recognize that your coming is soon and that it's high time for us to awake. 
It is high time for us to recognize that you are coming soon and all you are asking us to do is to hold on. Hold on to our belief. Hold on to what you have given us. Hold on to the words that Jesus left us because Jesus himself said, he who promised to return will return. And Lord, we pray in the name of your son, Jesus, we are, we'll be faithful to the end through the power of your indwelling spirit. Lord, we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Lord, as we enter into this time of worship, Lord, as Selene stand before us today, we pray, dear Lord, that your spirit will move in a mighty and mark way. We pray, dear Lord, that she will speak without hindrance. She will speak what you gave her to speak, dear Lord. And we ask, oh Lord, that you have promised that your word will not return void. So as she speak today, Lord, Help us, Lord, to hear and understand, and not only to hear, but to listen, as we heard last night. Lord, we thank you again, and we praise you in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. 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 Morning, church. Good morning. Our um, offering for our offering for this week is for our local church budget, and of course, this was written before COVID. I would say so. Keep that in mind. December is accompanied by a holiday shopping anxiety for some of us. The holiday season implies spending and keeping up with the standards and also keeping up with the Joneses. But in November of 2018, the American Research Group noted that the average American would spend around $1,000 on holiday gifts. And this number was up from the previous year in 2017. Single item purchases are becoming more expensive and larger. But there's something changing and I, I, I've witnessed it myself. Customers, or sorry, consumers are getting fatigued with the constant drumbeat of spend, spend, spend. Movements are springing up around the idea of consuming less and living more affordably. From tiny houses to skipping gifting entirely. Our society is shifting our priorities. More and more people are treasuring experiences, family, and opportunities to serve instead of purchasing objects. The Bible reminds us that where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Before the holiday season begins, let us resolve to focus on people's needs and opportunities to serve. Let us seek those in need in our local communities and cherish the opportunities that God puts in our way. We have a choice. We can continue to be consumers or we can become providers and services to those vulnerable and in need. So at this time, let us bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father in heaven, Lord, we come before you again one, once more to ask that you bless the offering as people give in the various ways. Lord, we come before you and wanna thank you and ask your blessings upon this. We ask this in your name, amen. Mm -hmm. Yes, Jesus loves me. 
Good morning, church. Good morning, children. Welcome to my story corner. Well, today, people, can everybody hear me? Everybody see you. Raise your hand if you can hear and see me. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> today, people get news in many different ways. And so I'm wondering, children, do you know what news is? Well, it's new information about important happenings, whether it's in our city or in our country or around the world. And we get news in many different ways today. We get news in the newspaper. We can learn about the news from our phones and our computers. And we can learn about the news by watching TV or listening to the radio. But you know what? Back in Jesus's time, they didn't have, can you imagine? They didn't have a newspaper. They didn't have a cell phone. They didn't have an internet or a TV or a computer or a radio. They didn't have any of these things. So how did people learn about new information? How did people learn about exciting things? They learned because people used their voices. They would pass along information by talking and sharing information and sharing stories. Just like our pastor and our speaker today are going to pass along information through speaking. So how did people learn back then about Jesus? Well, God sent a special, a special messenger to prepare the way. This messenger would use his voice, and I'm going to use bells when I talk about using a voice. This messenger would use his voice to tell people about Jesus. And do you know whom God called this messenger? This messenger was John the Baptist. Now, John the Baptist was the messenger that God chose to bring good news to the people. John traveled around the desert preaching to the people that they should repent of their sins and turn away from their sins and live differently. And you know what? People were listening to John the Baptist. They confessed their sins and he baptized them in the River Jordan. Well, John the Baptist was very popular and he had a great following, but he always used his voice to tell people about Jesus. He would say, someone is coming soon who's way greater than I am, he would say. Yes, John the Baptist was faithful in bringing the good news through his voice to the people during Jesus's time. Do you know, it's been over 2,000 years since God sent his son Jesus as a baby, but God still needs messengers to spread the word. Just like John the Baptist spread the word about Jesus, God still needs messengers, doesn't he? And who can be a messenger to spread the word about Jesus? We can. Won't you be God's messenger to spread the word about Jesus? And you can do that by talking about Jesus. You can do that by maybe even giving them a book, a Bible story at some point or sending them an email to encourage them or reading from the Bible with them. There are lots of ways that you can share the message and be a messenger like John the Baptist. There are many passages in the Bible that talk about the good news of Jesus. And I'm wondering if you might do a little search of the Bible and see how many passages you can find that talk about Jesus being the good news. And I have one passage I want to read to you, and it's Luke 2, 10. And it says, Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy which will be to all people. And that's the good news 
The great joy is Jesus Christ. Amen. So you might want to do a search, see how many passages you can find about the good news being brought to the people. And remember, just like John the Baptist, you're a messenger and you should, can share that good news with all you meet. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you so much that we can be messengers for you and that we can have John the Baptist as our model. And Lord, we thank you for this special time of year when the world celebrates the birth of Jesus. Lord, we don't know the exact um, time of year when you were born, but this is the time of the year that the Lord, or the, I'm sorry, this is the time of year that the world celebrates your birth. And there are many people who don't know about you, Jesus. So help us to be your messengers and share the good news with our friends and people we meet. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. See you next time, everybody. I won't have you all big on the screen. Mm -hmm.
Good morning and happy Sabbath to all. I'm really excited to be here today and share the word of God. However, I do feel that God has made some experiences possible for me so that I can share this with you. But before I begin, like the song that we sang, I need the prayers. I want you to intercede for me at this time because I know um, it is not easy and I need the prayers. So please, as I share this word with you, I'd like each one of you to please pray in your heart and intercede on my behalf. On December 17, 2019, in the middle of the night, I started to feel very cold. It was a different kind of a chill, a chill I had never experienced in my life before. I could not wait for the morning to arrive because I did not want to wake up Ivan in the middle of the night. I called in sick at work, which is quite unusual for me. Ivan knew I was really unwell in order to call in sick at work. To make the long story short, I was quite sick and returned to work after three weeks on January 2nd, 2020. I was now healthier and strong and the new year had arrived. We were excited about the new year and as always thought that the year ahead of us will be better than the year that had gone by. We started to plan ahead. We started to plan our vacation. We started to plan what countries we are going to visit this year. New Year, how would we ensure our physical, social, emotional, and spiritual health, and so on and so forth. But before long, we were hit by COVID-19 pandemic. All plans were crushed, disappointments set in, anxiety related to health, economics, family separation, mental health concerns, hospitalizations, disabilities, and death increased. There was chaos and no one was ready for what laid ahead. For many of us, a world became upside down. This chaos did not spare the believers. This chaos did not spare the church going people. This chaos did not spare Christians. Everyone was impacted by it, some more than others. I'm sure our brothers, sisters, children, parents, neighbors, colleagues, aunts, uncles, cousins, and many more were and are impacted. What are we doing about it? You and I may say, that they have not shared their concerns with me. It seems like they're doing fine. Let me tell you friends, most of the people struggling will not share their struggles with you or with me. You may ask, well, if they don't share, what can I do? How can I help? Well, let me tell you that each one of us can pray for the other. Sister Ellen G. White in a book, Testimonies for Church, volume three, page 530 states, there are those all around you who have woes, who need words of sympathy, love and tenderness and our humble pitting prayers. Let us pray. Our divine father in heaven, I come to you this morning, Lord. And I ask Lord, that you anoint me with your Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray that every single word that comes out of my mouth is yours and not mine. 
Lord, I also pray for my friends that are listening to me. Lord, I pray that they will each open their hearts up. They will not look at me, but the words that, are, that come from you. And Lord, I also pray that each one will intercede on my behalf as I share this with, you, with them. Accept me as I am, and Lord, forgive my sins, for I ask these mercies in Jesus' holy name. Amen. My topic for today may not be new information for you, but I have planned to share it anyways, because it had a powerful impact on my life, and I hope that you will be blessed too. Second, I need constant reminder about the importance of prayer. Third, I have experienced how the prayers of others have blessed me, changed my situation, helped me to deal with my situations better, and how my prayers have impacted others and in return has also blessed me. Are you a prayer warrior? A prayer warrior is someone who looks beyond their own need and prays for the need of others. It is an expression of unselfish love. It reflects the character of God, his unconditional love, mercy, and grace. According to William Gurnall, an English author and an Anglican clergyman, it is not only a duty to pray for others, but also the desire and also to desire the prayer of prayers of others for ourselves. Who can be a prayer warrior? Well, let me give you this good news. We all can be prayer warriors. There are many examples of prayer warriors in the Bible. However, today I will share two with you. The first prayer warrior I would like to share with you is Abraham. Abraham is not only the father of faith, but also a prayer warrior. He prayed for the people of Sodom. We are familiar with the story. However, let us turn to Genesis 18 verses 22 to 33. We will pick up the story in verse 22. Then men turned away and went toward Sodom, but Abraham remained standing before the Lord. Then Abraham approached him and said, will you sweep away the righteous with the wicked? What if there are 50 righteous people in the city? Will you really sweep it away and not spare this place for the sake of 50 righteous people in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to kill the righteous with the wicked, treating the righteous and the wicked alike. Far be it from you, will not the judge of the earth do right? The Lord said, if I find 50 righteous people in the city of Sodom, I will spare the whole place for their sake. Then Abraham spoke again. Now that I have been so bold to speak to the Lord, though I am nothing but dust and ashes, what if the number of righteous is five less than 50? Will you destroy the whole city for the lack of five people? What if only 40 are found there, he said. For the sake of 40, I will not just do it. Then he said, may the Lord not be angry, but let me speak. What if only 30 can be found there? He answered, I will not do it if I find 30 there. Abraham said, now that I have been so bold, as to speak to the Lord, what if only 20 can be found there? He said, for the sake of 20, I will not destroy it. Then he said, 
May the Lord not be angry, but let me speak just once more. What if only 10 can be found there? He answered, for the sake of 10, I will not destroy it. When the Lord just finished speaking with Abraham, he left and Abraham returned home. We see in this story here that Abraham was a prayer warrior for the people of Sodom for the sake of his nephew, Lot. He started with asking God if he would spare Sodom if 50 righteous people were there. From 50, he boldly but humbly continued to ask about 45, 40, 30, 20, and finally 10. God answered, I will not destroy it for the sake of 10. Though God did not find 10, he fulfilled Abraham's intent by sparing Lot and his family. Abraham's prayers saved Lot and his family's life. The second example of prayer warrior in the Bible that I chose is none other than Jesus himself. In John 17, we find Jesus prays to be glorified. He prays for his disciples and he prays for all believers. I'd like to pray, play the Bible um, verses from John 17, starting from verses 6 to 17. I'm going to play this. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me. Can you hear? They have obeyed your this? word. Can somebody give me a sign they that they can hear? That everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I'm not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine. And glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe by that name you gave me. None has been lost except the one doomed to destruction so that scripture would be fulfilled. I am coming to you now, but I say these things while I am still in the world so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, for they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify myself, that they too may be truly sanctified. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory. The glory you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you. And they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. We see in, this, uh, in these Bible verses um, that 
God knew that he was going to be separated from his beloved. Christ prays for his disciples and all the believers. He prays for their protection, their unity, their faith. And in his prayer, Christ expresses his truest love. He wants to be known by us. He wants to have a deep relationship with us. We have another example of Jesus praying for Simon Peter. Satan has convinced Judas to betray Jesus to religious leaders for 30 pieces of silver. Religious leaders rejoiced. Jesus' disciples argued amongst themselves who is going to be the greatest, while Jesus approaches the time when he will suffer the most intense pain and agony ever experienced. In spite of his impending suffering, Jesus let Peter know that he has prayed for him. In Luke 22, verses 31 to 32, like it was read in the scriptures by Sister Linton, it, Jesus states, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift all of you as wheat, but I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers and sisters. I'm, it said, strengthen your brothers, and I include sisters as well. Another example of Jesus's prayer is found in Luke 23, verse 34. Even, was, even when Jesus was being tormented, afflicted, and in anguish, or crucifix, in anguish of crucifixion, he was looking out and praying for others. In Luke 23, 34, Jesus pleads with his Father in heaven to forgive his tormentors. He prays, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. In all his suffering, he thought beyond himself and showed compassion for others. Jesus prayed for his believers and tormentors alike while he was on this earth. Presently, he is in heaven and interceding on our behalf before the Father against the accusations of Satan. Why would Jesus bother to pray for others? He knew that we need those prayers. He knew that we needed the prayers of our brothers and sisters. He knew that we needed his prayers. How many of us have thought to pray for others, let alone praying for others when we are going through trials and suffering? I'm going to be honest with you, I have not. I'm looking and hoping that someone else is lifting me up in prayers when I'm going through a tough time. When I'm going through trials and suffering, I am relying on others to pray for me. Maybe I have the luxury to do this. Maybe I do this because I'm surrounded by prayer warriors. I am blessed by a husband who sometimes will wake up at two o'clock in the morning and pray for me when he knows that I am going through a tough time. I have an earthly father who emulates the character of our heavenly father and prays for me unconditionally. I'm fortunate to be blessed by a praying mother who prays for me all day long. They are not only praying for me, but constantly reminding me that Jesus is the ultimate help as mentioned in Psalms 46, one to three. It reads, God is our refuge and strength and ever present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth give way and mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and mountains quake with their surging. A father who tells me that if you are going through an issue or if you are struggling, we are going to pray even harder. Well, let me tell you friends, everyone may not be as blessed as I am. 
Therefore, it is imperative for you and for me to be a prayer warrior. But sometimes we may think, what is in it for me? I have enough to ask God in my prayers for myself. Where do I fit others? But let me tell you what happens when we pray for others. And I'm sharing this from my personal experience. When we pray for others, it causes us to internalize God's word and change us and our own situation. Please allow me to share an example. Like many people, my work situation and most of my colleagues, if not all colleagues, their work situation has changed. Since March 2020, our assignments have changed many, many times with minimal training and no notice. You may go to work in the morning and you're told that you're not doing this work, but you're doing something else. The information is changing by the minute and you are expected to keep up with it. You can only imagine the stress and anxiety it, it has caused to many. And I'm not immune to this stress. However, during this chaos, there have been blessings in disguise. One of my colleagues and I have connected and we pray together and individually for each other and our workplace. Since we don't work on the same day, we still call each other in the morning and pray for the person working that day. And of course, for the team and the work. Then we pray in the evening as well for the one who is not working because in the morning there's not enough time sometimes to pray for both of us to pray at the same time. The stress was so high that I felt I could not pray. Many times I felt that I cannot pray. I don't know how to pray. That's how I felt. Satan is hard at work to discourage us, to make our lives difficult and often make it difficult to cope with situations. But I can tell you that we can defeat Satan in his purpose by praying for others as Abraham prayed for others as Jesus prays for others and praying with others. Praying for others and with others cause multiple blessings to flow to us and return to us. Since I started to pray for my, for, since I started to pray for and with my colleague, I have experienced blessings for myself. I find that when I pray for and with my colleague and claim God's promises for her, I am reminded of his promises. And when I'm reminded of those promises, I internalize those promises and feel the calm and feel blessed. When, I, when we pray for others, it, is, it not only blesses others, but it renews our own hope and our own faith. The evidence of bless, being blessed when we pray for others is also found in the Bible. After Job had prayed for his friends, the Lord restored his fortunes and gave him twice as much as he had before. All his brothers and sisters and everyone who had known him before came and ate with him in his house. They comforted and consoled him over all the troubles the Lord had brought on him. And each one gave him a piece of silver and a gold rim. Job 42 verses 10 and 11. So as you see that when we pray for others, we are abundantly blessed. We ourselves are abundantly blessed. Praying for others humbles us and unite our hearts with the people and places we are praying for. When we are praying for someone and they tell you how it has helped them, and they have felt the calm in chaos, it truly humbles me. 
when I was praying for my friend and with her, I wasn't expecting that she was going to tell me how my prayer has helped her. She told me that since we have been praying together, she said, Shalini, I've never had this kind of peace in the last little while. And I'm experiencing this peace since you've prayed for me and prayed with me. And it humbled me because I wondered who am I that God hears my prayer and causes other to feel his calm and presence when sometimes in the chaos, I myself don't feel like that. Our prayers have long-term impacts beyond this age. The Lord can use us to bring people to his fold. We have all heard of stories how parents' prayers brought their children back to Christ. How a friend's prayer made someone to accept Christ as their personal savior. How collective prayers have caused healing. And I can go on and on about this. But I want to share we too have the remarkable privilege to faithfully pray for the people God has placed in our lives. After assembling the nation together to anoint Solomon, David led the people in prayer. David recounted God's faithfulness to Israel and he prayed for the people to remain loyal to God. And then he included a personal prayer specifically for his son Solomon. As mentioned in 1 Chronicles chapter 29, verses 19, David prays for his son Solomon. In his prayer, he asks God to give my son Solomon the wholehearted devotion to keep your commands, statutes, and decrees. Our example of faithfulness can make an indelible impact that will remain even after we are gone. Just as God continued to work out the answers to David's prayers for Solomon and Israel after he was gone, so too the impact of our prayers outlive us. Therefore, my friends, I plead with you today to do not take this blessing of being a prayer warrior and a privilege of praying for others lightly. Our prayers can ha calm hearts, broke, heal brokenhearted, heal the sick, cause forgiveness, bring others close to Christ. People who have lost faith, it brings back faith and many other blessings. Do not let this blessing pass you by because your prayers may have everlasting impact on someone's life today and for eternity. Be a prayer warrior. Thank you. But before I end, I have one more thing that I want you to think about. I want you to think about that, yes, this is great. You know, this is encouraging right now. But what next? I'd like each one of you to have your own action plan. What are you going to do now moving forward from this afternoon or tomorrow or whenever you feel ready? I encourage each one of you to make it intentional to pray for others. And how can you do this? Maybe you can have a piece of paper, a simple thing, and write a couple names on that, however many you can. It is not about a number game. It is just about praying for others. So just whoever Lord places upon your heart, you pick those people and pray for them every day. You can say you're going to pray for this person for a week or however long God places that burden upon your heart. It, whether it's a day, week, 
months, years, you know, I'm sure the Lord will let you know. So my humble prayer today in concluding this is that we all take this very seriously and intentionally and do not less, let this blessing and privilege pass us by. Thank you. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, that calls me from a world of care, and bids me at my Father's throne, recall my wants, and wishes know in seasons of distress and grief my soul has often found relief and often escaped the tempter's Return, sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, thy wings shall my position bear to You're muted, Shalini. Sorry. <laughs> Our Father in heaven, we come to you again this afternoon to thank you for all your blessings, your love, your care, and your protection, Lord. We praise you and worship you, Lord. 
And Lord, we thank you for everything that you've done for us. And most of all, we thank you for your son who came into this world and shed his blood on the cross of Calvary so that we may be saved. We also thank you for inter continuing to intercede on our behalf, Lord. Lord, just like you have given us example of interceding, Lord, help us so that we may intercede on each other's behalf, Lord. And Lord, we all need each other's prayers. So Lord Jesus, help us so that we may make it intentional in our lives to pray for each other and lift each other up to you. And Lord, even though sometimes things are difficult and sometimes we feel that this, we are not making a difference, but we do know that you are always with us and you are making the change in our lives. Lord Jesus, as we depart from your service, may we not, de may we not depart from your presence. And Lord Jesus, draw us close to yourself. And Lord, we pray for your protection. And Lord, we pray for each and everyone that is present here and people that cannot be present here. I lift each one up each one up to you and pray that each one of us may feel your presence. Forgive us our sins and shortcomings and prepare us for your coming so that when you come on the clouds of heaven, may we all join you and go to our heavenly homes. For I ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. pray God that you will continue to, to share messages like that because right now we all need to spend more time in prayer and I really appreciate your message for this morning. Thank you. Praise God and thank you for your encouragement, Brother Ephraim. Mm -hmm.